Hey, it's Pete from Sheep Homesteading, and today I'm heading back, and we are going to dump some sap. Uh, the bucket should be pretty full. I didn't have a chance last night to get out and dump the sap, which I try to do it every night. So we're coming out here first thing in the morning so we can uh, dump it in case they start to overflow. I don't want to waste any of the sap. So, so that's what we're doing today. So let's go. I'm just going to make a video showing how I store my sap and uh, how I collect it and everything. You know what? I really do need to automate it a whole lot more because it is a lot of work. But you know what? It's a lot of fun too. So this is going to be part of how to make maple syrup series. So the first thing you have to do is have a place to store all that sap you've collected. doesn't matter if you have tons of pails and all that. If you don't have a place to store it until you boil it, it's going to be hard. There's another thing to think of. What am I going to do with all that sap and how am I going to get it into the pan? So I'm going to show you how my setup is. I don't do everything right, but uh, I'm just going to give you a tour of how I do things. So we're at the sugar shack and you need a place to store the sap. So I have a thousand liter cube up on a stand and I have barrels too, but if it's up in the cube, I can actually just remove this window, run a hose and it'll dump right into the pan. That is part of the consideration you need is to actually have um, your tank above the pan. If you don't, you'll be hauling sap and wood on boil day. And what's going to happen is you're going to be super tired. It's enough work just loading the fire, keeping it going without actually um, hauling sap in buckets and trying to dump it in or empty drums. So uh, if you can get your tank or whatever you store your sap with uh, high enough, you can just open a tap and it pours in. That is the way to do it. This whole thing is a bit of a work in progress. I'm thinking I'm going to need two cubes, so 2,000 liters. And the issue is um, putting the sap in the cube. I've been climbing up this ladder and then dumping it in, which isn't ideal. You have to make sure that you keep the tank clean. I clean it out at the end of the year. I clean it out in the spring. I try to use more organic stuff like vinegar and stuff like that. But you know what? It's going in and it's going to be boiled. A lot of people use more chemical stuff. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm trying to keep it pretty simple and pretty simple is using vinegar. Uh, you know what? A lot of people will probably complain about that, but uh, you know what? It's been good for me anyways. The outside, the tank looks dirty, but I don't wash the outside because honestly, uh, it's enough work cleaning the inside of everything. So that's what it looks like. But that's my goal is to build another stand here put another tank and a nice uh, walkway so I can actually safely fill it. But that's where I'm at. So now collecting your sap, you're gonna need, uh, you know, something that you can drive around. I have a four wheeler, but I don't have a proper tank on it. Uh, my tractor doesn't have a proper tank on it. I decided this year to go with pails, which is a whole lot more hauling. And I really didn't think this through. So you know what? I have a lot of pails that I'm going to be dumping by hand and hauling. So, you know, you do have to keep that in consideration next year. I am going to try to put two tanks on my uh, tractor, like two 45 gallon drums so I can drive around, dump the sap in, and then maybe I'll get some to even pump it out. Uh, because that's another thing. It'd be easy if I can just pump it into the cube instead of actually hauling it up the ladder with uh, 20 liter pails. That would be so much easier, but you know what? I'm just kind of into get her done mode. We need the uh, sap up in the cube. And uh, if I have time, I'm going to try to put up another cube this year because with the extra pails, I've been getting a lot of sap. So let's start collecting it.
So whatever you have, you got to make sure that it's all food grade. Uh, like these pails here are wine pails. You know, the ones that hold the uh, grape juice before they make the wine. So I have some of them. My cubes mainly held olive oil, bulk olive oil. I had to clean them out really good, but they work great. So just make sure that everything is food grade. You don't want to have pails that aren't food grade uh, because it's just, yeah, it's not good for you anyway. So it's better to make sure that they're all food grade. What you're about to see is not the most ideal way of collecting sap and putting it in a cube. Uh, I really would love to make tanks and pumps, but eventually I've been slowly doing it over the years. But right now, the only way I can put the sap up there is by pail and climb up that ladder. So it's really not the most ideal, but you know, it works and I'm kind of on a getter done every year at this time of year. Okay, so that is how I put sap in a cube. I'm going to continue collecting the sap, and you see where it is to the second bar on the uh, cube. Uh, we're going to see how much I get today. Uh, we got about 200 liters of sap. Uh, yesterday, it really flowed. It got really warm, and it pretty well filled the bottom of the tank already. So I'm kind of afraid. Tomorrow I might add another tank so I just have a little more capacity so I can make the weekend. So there is two tips about carrying sap in a bucket. Number one is don't do it. Uh, try to get a, a drum on your tractor or your ATV. It makes it easier on your body. Uh, you won't wear yourself out. Number two, if you're like me and I didn't put a drum on my tractor and I'm carrying it with a bucket, it, it's important to make sure that when you're near the sugar shack and you're walking, picking up sap, that you don't pick up the buckets closest to the sugar shack first. Because the issue is you're going to pick them up and you're going to carry all that weight farther away from the sugar shack only to carry it back again. So it's really important that you go to the end of the run and work your way this way and you'll pretty well carry half the weight of sap that you would as if you're walking away from the sugar shack collecting sap from any pail you get to. So that is an important tip. So you're not gonna wear yourself out, especially if you're not organized and don't have a tank on your tractor or whatever. So, so you know what? I only have a few more pails to pick up and I'm going to be heading in. I'm gonna come out a little bit later and uh, probably uh, try to cut a little wood or whatever, but I pretty well picked up the sap for the day. So that's about enough for today. And you guys have a good one.